you were one of the people alongside Stephen Hawking who uh, raised the alarm. You basically said, hey, uh, artificial intelligence might create great opportunities, but it also creates existential yeah. risk. Yeah. Are you watching what's happened with open AI and this chat GPT? What's your take? Oh, on yes. I, well, yeah, I play with it and use it. It's the sort of thing I thought might happen <laughs> and it's happening. Uh, I think it is important that people think about the implications of having these enormously powerful instruments. The thing I really worry about is not so much the raw power, raw intellectual power of what's emerging, but the fact that much of the research in artificial intelligence and applications is driven by military concerns. If you think about it, you're training necessarily and, and, and uh, when you're training uh, or using AI for military purposes, you're making devices that are uh, suspicious <laughs> because they, they're, they're, they want to defend uh, against external threats and uh, are very aggressive because they want to uh, force uh, attackers or, or aggressors to do things that they didn't want to do. So even if you're thinking of uh, making a purely defensive device, you're, you're making devices that are, if they were human, you'd call them paranoid because they're worried about things and you call them uh, aggressive because they need to react strongly to perceived threats. Uh, so you're basically uh, training super minds that are paranoid schizophrenics <laughs> because they also have limited, limited understanding and, and not human understanding. Uh, so a kind of understanding you don't really yourself understand. So it's very, very dangerous. Are you concerned that these weapons would start glitching and uh, kill innocent people? Or are you concerned that they actually can turn against humanity in general? Well, both, but especially the first. In my experience, very intelligent people also tend to be very nice people, very <laughs> empathetic people. They have the imagination to put themselves in the other guy's shoes, so to speak. They have an appropriate humility given the way the world works and how, how small the earth is in the universe and how small any individual is in the earth. These kinds of universal values and empathy, I think, are characteristic of profound understanding. And I think super intelligent beings, be they artificial or uh, uh, sort of, uh, cyborg uh, collaborations of, of uh, people with machines, uh, I tend to think will be uh, benevolent but things could go wrong, uh, and especially if the intelligence, as I said, is endowed with motivations that are not based on profound understanding or empathy or kind of its large experience in the world, but kind of special purpose and, and uh, limited in perception, yet very powerful. This is not a new concern. It does, it's not really even a concern uh, that's necessarily linked to artificial intelligence of, the, of a high caliber. Uh, it goes back to ideas about doomsday machines, mm -hmm. for instance, that, you know, are very, if you think about it, these are very, very special devices <laughs> that have a kind of intelligence. They sniff out certain kinds of situations and then react very, very strongly and powerfully. So that's the kind of model of what you don't want. You don't want something with limited perceptions and great power. I guess what I would advocate, what not I guess, what I advocate is that people think hard about what could be, how the future might develop, uh, and then think about knowing what could be, what, what they want to happen. Uh, so. 
out of the menu of things that could be, but choose things that should be. And then knowing that uh, make the appropriate choices to make sure that you get that item on the menu and not the ones that you don't want.